those three items are paid and ready to ship. What is up guys, Luke from Luke Learns, uh, back on an eBay kind of video today. It's how I ship my packages for beginners. I just started a couple months ago and I, I, might, I might have some input. So down here I have some Tony Hawk tech deck stuff in a box. And we're gonna actually just go over how I ship the bigger stuff. I purposely didn't like change any of the listing stuff. Um, so I can show you guys that. So well, all I did, first of all, was I wrapped um, each piece in bubble wrap. That is my bubble wrap. It's it's just like 14 pieces. And I don't even know if this box is big enough. I just went and got it out of my car. Bruno. Bruno. There's your stack Bruno. Here's the box. Obviously, Bruno wants to play. All you're going to do is just make sure the thing's not going to like... Get all ripped up. I'm gonna use bubble wrap just because it's at hand. But you can use your um, newspaper or anything else. I just want to make sure the bottom of the box has a little fun or <laughs> fun little layer just for, for added protection. These are, I mean, these are tech deck pieces, so they have like a hard plastic. I just feel like better safe than sorry on a lot of things. I've had some stuff break already, and it just better safe than sorry. So I just layered the bottom. Now I'm gonna lay in my parts. You can kind of just see that I'm, I'm I'm jigsaw puzzling these in here so they're kind of flat on top of each other. I think I might be like one piece too many as far as making it all fit in this one box. Seriously a bummer if I can't do it. Well, okay, that worked. So it like barely just made it. Now these little dead fill spots I'm gonna just throw an extra piece of bubble wrap in it. Just I kind of want them to be above the highest piece of um, sh whatever I'm shipping. So even if I like lay it on top, and that's actually I'll put another layer. I am wasting a lot of bubble wrap. You don't have to bubble wrap. You could use newspaper. It's just I I feel safer knowing that it's bubble wrap on there, and then squeeze it up and seal it. You can probably figure this out on your own. Now, what the problem is, well, I'll, I'll put a couple more in. That's all shipped and ready to go, or packaged and ready to go. Okay, so we packaged the box. There it is, all nice and ready to go. And now the shipping part. Most people that are beginners will probably just take that straight to post office and have them like weigh it and give you the shipping rate. That is where it's going to cost you the most. If you do that, it's just, it's going to bite you in the butt. All right, guys, so, sorry this is so dark. With, with eBay, you'll be ready to ship, and you have that all packaged, and then you get to the post office, they weigh it, and they're like, 25 bucks. That's what you owe. And you're like, shit. I only, <laughs> they only paid me $17. And you, you get screwed over. So I've done this a couple times. What I did almost immediately after doing it the first time was get a scale. This is an AccuTech. It was actually a, like $4 cheaper because I got the gold one. It looks pink. It's a scale and I don't care. <laughs> it was cheaper. And that's got good reviews. I'll link that in, in the description below if you need a scale. But I would highly recommend it. So once you get the scale and you weigh your stuff out and you're ready to go, you measure it and weigh it. So this is actually something like every beginner should be doing before you even list the item because then you know exactly how much it's going to ship for. And I'm on the computer here. I bet you didn't know that. So I do I do one to three um, days as, as like far as that's how long it's going to take me to get it out. I normally get it out within a day. Like I'll pack it that night and ship it the next day. But I give myself that two days extra just because. So when you go to print shipping label, which is which is on here, and I'll, I'll try to get in here for you. So this is your sold stuff. Um, these are all my sold items. This is a big one. This, is, this one I, I sold for $24.99. Um, he paid $15.10 in shipping, which honestly I think I'll get pretty close to that. This is my problem. I did not do what I just said to do by weighing it out, packaging it, knowing what, what I'm shipping it for. So this was, I threw a random number in um, 12 by 12 inches by 8 inches which I already know my pack is like 14 by whatever, and 6 pounds. So they paid me 15.10 based on those measurements. So like you can see 
down here, hopefully, um, it's change weight and dimensions. Once, once it's sold and ready to go, you can still change it, so it's not ever too late. I actually know I messed up, because <laughs> I did and this was on purpose, so I could, like, it's not on purpose, it was just laziness, but I figured if this came up and I sold it, that, uh, what well, this, this is, like, probably the most common m mistake made by beginners, like myself. So I got 20 by 14 by 9, and hopefully it's not 6 pounds. Okay, so, it's blur, it's blurry, but, uh. Uh, zeroed out. This scale is cool because it's got battery operation. Oh, okay. So like I said, I always shoot to be on the safe side, so I'll just do five pounds, seven ounces. And even though he paid me fourteen or fifteen for shipping, this cost is, is going to cost me twenty four twenty eight to ship. So yeah, he paid me twenty four ninety nine plus fifteen ten to ship it, and um, I got forty oh nine over here. Um, so he paid fifteen ten. So I actually, I mean, I'm I'm still making money on this. Uh, those tech deck, I didn't. I, somebody actually gave them to me. So that's pure profit, if I can do math. Yeah. So or just under sixteen. So like for me, that worked out. I've had deals that did not work out like that. It's just it's just part of the game. If you if you like I said, you have to get this. <laughs> you have to get the scale. Otherwise, you can't really calculate uh, shipping costs before you go out and and start shipping stuff at the post office or whatever. eBay even gives you a discount. Like my discount for that one was seven forty two. So that's just like a big the big packages. Don't let those don't let those big packages uh ruin your day because they will. Just make sure your pricing's right. Um that's what that's what all those big YouTubers for eBay are telling you about pricing. It's like if you screw up and like I luckily put a price on there that still covered the shipping cost and that's a, in my mind what he paid for shipping was what I was going to make for profit and it, it turned out that's kind of exactly what it was. So um, everybody wins for this particular deal because I feel like it's about an hour's worth of work um, total and uh, that's 15 bucks an hour which is actually more than I make per hour right now. So yeah. So the next item is so I actually sold these shoes these keen they're keen sandals they're in really good condition and anything keen that you get and it's gonna be out of focus I don't have auto focus anything you get keens these just make sure they're in good shape test them out make sure there's no nothing falling off of them but once once you do that once you make sure your keens are in good shape like they're gonna sell and I, I like the quick flip stuff so I took, uh, I think, what did I take on these? $19.99 maybe? Make 10 bucks quick. Um, Cause I paid, I think I paid $9.99 for them. Maybe less. Um, whatever. I, I won't pay more than 10 bucks for shoes. So I know it was at least 10 bucks. These are actually pretty easy to ship. I could actually just bubble wrap these and throw them in a poly bag. <sighs> okay, so because these are sandals, I don't feel like they're gonna cause the, the person too much harm and if I, if I don't put them in a box. So actually, you know what, this box that these are sitting on right here, that's a priority mail shoe box. And I, you know what, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna ship them the way I've been shipping shoes because then you guys can see how I do it. So normally I actually won't even bubble wrap shoes. Um, what I do is I just throw them in these poly bags and you can get them at uh, eBay or Amazon, doesn't matter. Just find whatever deal works for you. I usually buy like 200, poly bags at once they work quite well for um, <laughs> like poop bags for dogs um, shipping stuff so um, if you bubble wrap and throw them in the poly bag nothing wrong with that I, I, I feel personally the box even though it adds a little weight just looks better that's worth it to me if I got when I get packed poly bags in the mail it's just like a little cheap you know it's like a little depending on the item I guess I just put them in there each, every kind of shoe I do, I put them in their own poly bag and then I throw them in one of these. These are free from the post office. They are, what are they, 16, uh, 15 by 6 by 8, kind of. Those are like the rough sizes. It's, they call it the priority shoe box. And it's just, I mean, once you tape it up, tape roll is like lopsided. Ugh. So when, like once you, like these are designed... So these shoe these shoe boxes from the post office were designed to carry 
boxes of shoes. So I just feel like it's the right size. If, if it's a little big, I mean, this particular order, I mean, I definitely don't need something this big um, to put two little pairs of sandals in, or just one pair of sandals. But when that person gets it in their mailbox or wherever they get it, they're going to see that this is, or they're going to see this box with the label on it. And I just feel like getting this box in the mail versus just the poly bag, that makes a big difference. Um, it just does. I buy these, these. I don't buy these. These are free. So like, why not? Why not use them? So if you're penny pitching, and you want to save every little ounce, all you need is a knife, and you can just go ahead and and cut down to wherever the product is on all four, right? And then you just fold the flaps in. And you guys are gonna just pretend that I cut that. Doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna make a, a tiny little cut. So it doesn't really matter. So I'm going about, I don't know, an inch and a half maybe down. And just try to match it up to the other side. That's going to make a big difference. If you can't match it, then it's just not going to look as good when it folds. Um, so then all you're literally doing is folding it. So these boxes are pretty thin. And... Um, Normally, with the thicker boxes, I'll actually make a little perforation so it just it folds like on the crease that you just made. Otherwise, it's rounded sometimes. But this is changing the size of the box, and it still looks really good. This box is going to weigh the same because I didn't actually cut off any extra, but it, it now fits the shoes a little better. And um, when I take and when I type in the dimensions of the box itself, um, I saved about an inch and a half on, on total width. Uh, honestly, like for this weight and this shipping package, for the shipping package, I don't feel like it's going to make a huge price difference for me whether I did this to the box or not. Sometimes it does, especially for that box I just did. That big one, I would have, <laughs> if I had room to spare in that box, I was shaving it off because I know just an inch on those big boxes makes a difference to save it on. Um, but yeah, so that's now a very clean looking box. And I, I don't care if it rattles around. They're in bubble wrap. They're sandals. It really doesn't matter. So um, that's, that's item two. So the third thing is actually this, uh, it's, it's kind of a vintage... Elmo truck and it's got these little um, little rattler toys with it which those are these these are like super sturdy this has a moving part so that's not sturdy I think that's how I'll ship it right here just like click it down always just like take the most precaution I sold I found a, a vintage marks uh, action figure and it it was it was like thir a $31 sale I paid seven for it I, I made a big profit on it and it and it, I I shipped it and it broke in the mail and the guy was cool about it like he just accepted the refund or whatever and that just sucked so like from now on I, I make sure anything like this that's got these these moving parts that I package them um, really safely so what I'm gonna do is uh I'm actually gonna dismantle it so it's in many it's, it's in a bunch of pieces and like this guy this arm this can break off so what I'm going to do is just wrap the crap out of it in bubble wrap, right? You're like the the key is <laughs> the key is not to let stuff get broken in in transit cuz like you did everything on your part, like you, you you packed it, you shipped it. And if it gets to that person broken, their first their first th thought isn't that the post office broke it. Their fir first thought is going to be that you sold them some broke shit. And that's just that's just human nature to think that. So, um, I feel like that should do for those. And then Elmo himself, um, Your job is too good for Elmo! <laughs> he works. <laughs> tested. That's, that's, how you, that's how you know it was tested. You want everything to arrive safely, and it's just like, if it doesn't, you're going to be bummed, because whatever you paid for it at, at the thrift store is, uh, or wherever you, wherever you made it, got it from, um, whatever you paid for it, 
and then whatever they paid you for it plus shipping like that's all done like and honestly like the stuff that i've the stuff that i've uh shipped that was that ended up broken like they sent pictures as long as i could confirm that it was broken not like a scam or something which none of the items i, I really had broke were worth a ton of money but um you just like want to double check as long as they prove that it was broken and um whatever oh no i'm at the end of my tape roll it sucks literally literally cannot it sucks i go through like way way too much tape this is one of those costs that you have to be aware of when doing ebay is like shipping costs Shipping costs don't just include the fees that you ship stuff with. And I know I'm out of focus. I can see from here. Um, so when you ship stuff like the Elmo or um, anything, like if when you ship stuff, you're going to like want to make sure that that sucker is packaged as best as you can package it. I, I can't finish this last item just because I ran out of tape and I'm not going to use like scotch tape on something. But uh, I do have to ship that tomorrow. But anyway, the big one is what I wanted to show the most. So that's like the shipping. Like, So you want to get a scale and you want to get, uh, make sure you do that measuring thing before before you start doing like pack, big packages. They're going to they're gonna weigh more than you think and they're going to cost way more than you think to ship them. And it's just going to bite you in the butt. So it's done to, to me a few times. I ended up actually still making some money on that last one. But like imagine if I paid money for it, then that gets subtracted too. And it's just... It's a, it's a bummer. If you don't have a printer, you're going to have to do it at the post office anyway. Or somewhere that, that you can bring the PDF of, of the shipping label or something. I don't know how you have to figure that out. Uh, if you do have a printer, you can buy the sticky uh, 8x11 legal size um, <laughs> the label, label paper. Um, that's what I do just because you can cut them out. It's a sticker. Done. And it's all, all gravy. You don't have to though. You can just tape. You can print it regular paper and just tape it on. As long as it's not tape over the barcode, you should be all good. I've done that too. But yeah, so that's how you ship. That's how beginners ship for eBay. Hopefully this video wasn't just like droning on. Um, let me know anything else that you'd like to learn that I'm learning. I'd appreciate some feedback. Let me know. Thanks for watching. Luke out. Luke deuces. Let's uh, sell some stuff on eBay. What are you doing?